Hi everybody, Laura here. So glad to be joining you for this special stamp affair video. Today we're going to talk about adding thread nests to your project. Sometimes I like to call it loosey goosey thread, but we're going to call it thread nests today. I suppose that sounds maybe a little bit more professional. I don't know. Anyhow, let's dive right in. I have a panel of Stamper Select White and I'm going to do a lot of ink blending on this card. And you know, I love to do ink blending and the paper tray inks work beautifully. I am doing kind of an aqua teal panel here. I'm starting with aqua mist, Hawaiian shores, and for a little darkness and depth, I've got some tropical teal. So I'm doing each side, like the right side and the left side of the panel. I'm kind of blending it in lighter as you get towards the center. So it's like ombre and um, just like that. Now I don't show the whole process because you know, it takes a long while. I start sweating, you know, I got to take a break, get a drink of water. I come back. So I edit it out, but you know, you get the idea what I'm doing. So I did the teal panel. Now I've got another panel here where I'm doing kind of a yellowy orange. I start with harvest gold and that one just wasn't showing up hardly at all. Now the paper tray inks are a little bit drier than say like a distress ink. A distress ink is very, very wet and juicy. But the paper tray is a little drier, but they still blend beautifully. Uh, it's just a little bit different consistency with the ink. So you kind of got to get used to what you're doing. Now, I, if you notice, uh, a lot of times, especially when I get working into the darker inks, uh, I start tapping it off because I don't want to get too splotchy. And you always want to start with a light hand. You can see here that I'm, I'm going pretty fast speed. And I don't know why I was getting so rushy because it's always best if you just slow down and don't re rush and don't press too hard. You'll have better results that way. But you know me, sometimes I get going, I get excited. I'm excited about this color scheme because I'm going to do like this yellowy orange panel. And then I've got the teal panel. I'm going to die cut the teal one and lay it over top. And it just creates this like magical candle lit sunset dreamy card. Yeah, that's what I'm calling it. Anyhow, so we've got your two panels. Now I'm taking this die. This is called center stage cover plate. I'm going to die cut it right into that aqua or teal ink blended panel. And you'll see here, once you run that through, you get this great kind of like, what would you call it? It's not diagonal. It's kind of like V. It's like a V pattern. See that there. Now I went ahead and die cut three more just with some white cardstock. And I like to do this because I want to give a little bit of dimension, but not too much. And I didn't want to take the time to cut all the strips of foam tape. So adhering three of these together somehow in my mind seemed easier. It actually does go pretty quick using this Tombow mono adhesive. And then I'll go ahead and adhere the teal one on top of that. So you get just this slight bit of dimension. And to me, I think it makes all the difference in the world. I love dimension. I just do. Sometimes I can get carried away with my dimension. But okay, so look at this when you lay it over top. Just a gorgeous combination. I love how you get the dark on the sides and it, and it blends lighter into the center. So now once we have that all done, I'm going to just take it up a notch. We're kicking it up a notch. So I'm going to flick a little bit of water. Got my little mini mister here and it's filled with water and I'm just flicking. Just little specks, splatches, splatters, whatever you want to call it of water. And it does this little reaction. Same thing as like distress ink. Well, the, pic the paper tray inks do that magic as well. Dab it off with a paper towel and you've got just some subtle little splotches. Now I have this phrase play number seven die and I'm going to die cut. I got some terracotta tile cardstock and all I want is that thankful word to be so you see here i'll run it through and um i saw this and i thought you know because i knew i want to put a sentiment on my card and i was looking for something different than hello and happy birthday so i saw that and it said thankful i thought i'm going to use that for my sentiment so that's what i did i die cut a bunch of those out of terracotta tile then i realized terracotta tile was just a little bit too dark so i did one out of orange zest my cards are an evolution of decision making. <laughs> I change my mind on color schemes and layouts as I go. Sometimes it's so hard for me to do a video because as I'm creating a card, I'm changing my mind all the time. And then once I did this orange zest, I realized, well, that's just too flat. So I took out my terracotta ink and I put a little bit on the bottom half 
of that word die cut. So it gives it just a little something something. So you get like just a little bit of ombre action on your word die cut. Anytime I can slide in an ombre, I think it's always a good idea. So now I'm gonna adhere this quickly onto my card base. So I'll just take my, uh, well, I, you could have done Tombow Mono, but I also got my tape runner, either one whatever's easiest, whatever's closest to you, what, whatever you can do to exert the least amount of energy is the way to go. So we're adhering that on there. And then the next thing is the fun part. Here is the thread nests. I've got my silver thread. This is what I always use. I just have this, I got it at Hobby Lobby and I use it all the time. I love silver. I think it's a great neutral. You could use white, you could use neon colors. You could just go crazy with it, but I just have a spool of silver sitting on my windowsill and that's what I always grab. Now you see how I let it fall off and I keep it in that same circular form. Now this is my way of doing the loosey goosey thread. You can do it any way you want. I've seen some people do it really, really messy, but I kind of like a little bit of organization to my chaos. So even though it's loosey goosey thread, I still want it to look slightly kind of neat and tidy. Does that even make sense? I want to keep it all in its original circular form or motion. You see how I'm not, cause like if you don't, if you're not careful, your thread will start flipping around and then it gets all wonky. And I like it to stay kind of neat and tidy, even though it's loosey goosey. I know I sound like a crazy person right now, but I like, I have a method to my loosey goosey and I just slightly kind of pull it and shape it until I get it exactly how I want. And I kind of gauge it based upon either my word die cut or whatever I'm adhering over top of it, the size of it, because I want it to kind of be in proportion to whatever I'm putting over top. Does that make sense? I don't know if I'm even making sense. See, it's hard for me to explain what I do because I don't know why I do what I do. Okay, finish it off. I added a little, um, little bit of moonstones. Let me tell you, I've been using glossy accents because I was too cheap to buy the moonstones, but I'll tell you what, they are awesome and I am hooked for life. Now we're moving on to the second card. One more loosey goosey example or thread nests, whatever the case we are moving on. Now, if you like to stamp, if you're a stamper at heart like me, then you're gonna love this one. Now my first card, it had a lot of ink blending and I love ink blending, but I'll tell you when the rubber meets the road, mama is a stamper at heart and I just love stamping, stamping and stamping. And that's what this is all about. I'm creating this whole background using an image from the enclosed star stamp set. And uh, I inked it up first with Tropical Teal. Now I'm moving on to Harvest Gold and I'm kind of, you know, going in rainbow order. It's, this card isn't like, you, it doesn't scream rainbow, but it's still got the rainbow order enough to keep me happy. And this is truly, honestly, this is what I love to do right here. And I also love to eat French fries. And if you want to take it even one step further, I like to eat dark chocolate. And I'm just laying it out there. I like to stamp, eat French fries, but mostly it's dark chocolate. And it used to be dark chocolate with mint, but lately, you know, it's always changing. Now it's just straight dark chocolate. And my husband, poor husband, he just can't keep up with the changes. He's always trying to be thoughtful and do something nice, but you know, my tastes are always changing, you know? So it used to be, a, he could bring me a box of Junior Mints and I'd love it, but now I'm like kind of over it. And uh, so like, I just don't even know what I like anymore. And I don't like all that cheapy candy. I wish I did and my whole family, all the kids. We have like, we watch a movie every Friday night when we can, every, like the family, it's like a family night. We get pizza and we, we get a movie from the red box, you know? And um, everybody loves gummies and licorice and I just do not, like I just do not like it. And I wish I did, but I just do not. I like chocolate and I like expensive. <laughs> I like expensive dark chocolate. And that's kind of hard to find at Walgreens when you're going to get a red box movie. So sometimes I get left out of the party, but we'll always pop some popcorn and I'm happy with that. So um, anyhow, get back to the card. We've got our background all stamped and I am mounting this on a card base. I've got a little fun foam. I like to use when I'm gonna pop up a whole panel, I'll put a little fun foam, a whole sheet of fun foam and instead of doing a bunch of little strips of foam tape. So now we're gonna move on to stamping our little sentiment on a little strip of black, true black cardstock. This is a stamp from Thank You Kindly. It's actually two stamps in one. The top part says thank you. 
and then underneath that I'm gonna put uh, I think it says for your kindness I believe so um, I'll go ahead and stamp that first with Versamark ink pour a little white embossing powder on so I can see real clear where I need to stamp that next line of the sentiment so let's talk about the thread nests I've really only done it two ways I've done thread nests where I put a die cut sentiment like a word die cut over top or I do it like this way where I have like a sentiment strip and I put that over top so every time I've ever done like a thread nest it's when I have something that I'm gonna adhere over top of the thread nest I don't just have a thread nest by itself so um, you kind of have to have something to put over top of it because you have to have a way to adhere it to the card without like really showing it so here's the thread same thread that I used on the first my silver my go-to thread uh, I was thinking about trying something really crazy and doing like a neon pink and I will do that one day I didn't think the neon pink would go with my color scheme here and um, plus I just love the silver I think it's just a it's a complementary neutral it goes with everything it just fits you know it's like a pair of khakis it's like your favorite pair of jeans that's how silver thread is for me so we're gonna pop up that little sentiment strip with some foam tape and this is technically what is holding down your thread nest got me and all that's left to do is put some more of my beloved my new my new love affair the moonstones I'm telling you I don't know what I was thinking all these years thinking I could get away with the glossy accents because these moonstones oh Forget about it. I'm in love with them. Thanks so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Give this technique a try. You're going to love it. And I will see you next time. Have a great day.